guess. Okay, good. It's free beer. So, it was about 25 years ago that I decided I wanted to make it possible to use a computer and have freedom, which was impossible because at the time all the operating systems were proprietary. So you had to sign a non-disclosure agreement just to get a binary. You were forbidden to share with other people. You couldn't get the source code. And so basically you were shafted. Well, I better plug this thing in right now. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, where's the stop? Right there. No, it doesn't look like it. There's one by the registration. I'll plug it in. to me and I'll take care of it for you. Okay. So, I <clears throat> so you couldn't get the source code, so you couldn't study it, you couldn't change it, and you couldn't share it. So you were basically tied hand and foot. That's what proprietary software does to people. And my experience using free software and seeing proprietary software convinced me that proprietary software was simply evil, that it was something that had to be eliminated from the world in order to have a good ethical world. So <clears throat> I began developing the GNU system. <clears throat> what? Uh, no, actually, bad social skills is, fits in a class with a lot of things that are unfortunate, but they're not evil. <clears throat> There's a very big difference between something that nobody should ever do and something that maybe some people can't help doing. Right? Uh, some people will be bad at social interactions at least some of the time, even despite trying their best. Well, what can you do? Nobody's perfect. You can't say, <clears throat> from now, starting today, everybody must be perfect in a certain, even in a certain area of life. But when conduct is is malicious when it mistreats others, then yes, you can say, nobody should do this anymore. We have to stop. Even if it takes time to convince people, even if you never 100% put an end to it, still you can say, this is wrong. Nobody should ever do this, and when they do, we shouldn't tolerate it. In any case, we can see the success <coughs> and the lack of success of the free software movement in this computer, which is over here. Now, this is a laptop which can't suspend. Suspend and resume has not yet been implemented for it, which is a bit of an inconvenience. And it doesn't have power management implemented at all. So it, uh, m even my large external battery gets emptied in five hours. So I have about eight hours total usage in it without a power source. But there is no non-free software in it, as far as we can tell, anywhere. It's a 100% free software laptop. The first one I found, except for this one, which comes pretty close. There's a, bit, a little bit of non-free firmware in these, and the program that runs the wireless network is non-free. I was using an OLPC until a few days ago. And I chose it because it had a free BIOS. <coughs> open firmware. <coughs> That's different, I think. No, it's running open firmware. It doesn't have a BIOS. Uh, I thought it has core boot in it. Right? No, it's open firmware. So you're saying it doesn't have core boot in it. I thought it did. Oh, in any case. In any case, uh, so I got one of these and I switched to it and I deleted the non-free program that runs the built-in wireless device. So I, it's not functional. Well, one can live with that. There are ways to work around that problem. In any case, as I was switching to it, Negroponte was betraying us. He decided to make it easy in the future for people to field convert these machines to Windows, which means you can expect that that's what most schools, most governments will do, which means that I'm sad to say this will probably be a path 
for leading millions of children under the power of an evil mega corporation. But ironically, it was still the most ethical choice for me to use because it still didn't have a proprietary BIOS in it like the PC I'd been using before and like everything else I knew about. So I kept using it. And then I found out about another kind of computer, that one, which is made by Lemote. And they, it has, it doesn't, it's not a PC. It doesn't have an Intel-style CPU. And as far as we can tell, all the software really is free. Uh, <clears throat> so now I've switched to that. Well, this was a pain in the neck for me. This keyboard is very hard to use. I had to basically Velcro on a happy hacking keyboard on top of it to make it usable. And then there wasn't enough space, so I had to have an external disk uh, to keep most of my files in. And uh, many other things were inconvenient. It crashed very often. But I had escaped from a proprietary BIOS. Now, that computer is a little bit more reliable, as, except for the keyboard. But at least I can type on its keyboard. I still use the Happy Hacking keyboard sometimes. Uh, so and it's more convenient a little than this, but still not as convenient as what I was using before. But for the first time, it's a laptop you can get that comes with all free software. And it looks like there may be others in the future, too. And this is actually a, a prototype, and they aren't selling it. But they're going to sell another one. So. And there are various other companies which we may be able to get laptops from that run with all free software. So, little by little, we are winning. And yet, most computer users still use proprietary operating systems. Even worse, most users of the GNU slash Linux system, or BSD, which are the two fundamentally free operating systems, still use non-free software with them. In fact, of the thousands of distros of GNU slash Linux, nearly all of them come with or suggest for installation non-free programs. And of the three distributions of BSD, all of them do. This is, as far as I know, we have all free drivers. Yes, the drivers in this are all free, I believe. Except that there's that program. There's a program that uh, runs the wireless device. Oh, yeah, I, I understand on the chip. Yeah. I'm saying in, in the software, in the distribution. Right. As far as I know, it's all Well, that's act no, no. That program is in the distribution. You see, that program is in uh, slash firmware or something like that. And every time the system starts up, it copies that piece of firmware into the oh, chip that runs wireless. Okay, so there's that one. Yeah. So you, you might be, you might like to know that Marvell has promised that the next edition of that chip for the XO2 will not contain any proprietary software. Oh, great. Well, that's a step forward. If only we could expect the XO2 to most often run with this system, then it would still be a, a good thing. Maybe even a little bit better than before, but. So this shows how we are gradually making progress, but most computer users still have not come to recognize in a non-free program a threat to their freedom. And that is the most important thing of all for us to do in order to establish freedom in a durable way. Because <coughs> how did it happen that almost all GNU slash Linux distros include non-free software. How did it happen that Linux includes non-free software? It happened because of people who didn't think that that mattered. And it's going to keep on happening until we teach enough people that it does matter, until enough people say no to that and say no way to non-free software. I was visiting a free software activist who had set up a speech, and he didn't have a phone that I could make an international call from. So he said, come to my office, you could do it there. So I went to his office, 
And I said, well, where's the phone? And 